and because there was there's, uh, uh, there's uh, trillions of dollars of energy speculation going on on an annual basis, and they're driving up and down the price of gasoline. And so I proposed a bill to tax energy speculators, and uh, I thought this was going to come out pretty good, and we sent it off to something called the Joint Tax Committee, and it was a pretty modest tax. Uh, I was talking about uh, two-tenths of one percent tax on every speculative energy trade, which had only been allowed since the Enron Amendment, by the way. Before that, we didn't have this kind of trading, and somehow the country existed without it, but now we can't exist without speculative energy trading. So I said, well, okay, I don't like it, but uh, just two tenths of one percent on every trade. I mean, it's pretty small, you know. And so we send it off to the Joint Tax Committee. A couple of months later, my staff says, oh, we're going to answer on your tax. I said, great. How much money will it raise? And they said, nothing. I said, how can that be? There's four trillion dollars of, of you know trades going on in energy. And they said, oh, because the Joint Committee said if you tax the speculators two tenths of one percent per trade, it stops speculating. And I said, well, then we should still do it, but we won't get any income, you know, so, anyway, yes, sir. Did you comment on the Keystone Pipeline series? I think that's what it's called. Uh, I guess it's the pipeline from the oil sands down to, uh, uh, well, there. Uh, Environmental impact. Yeah, well, there's, uh, there was a, a vote in the House and the bill she was talking about to waive all environmental requirements and uh, and to just go ahead with the project, which I voted against, it passed the House, it won't come up in the Senate, uh, but they would have preempted any environmental review. A number of the states along the pipeline are concerned. We did have a little spill in the Yellowstone River this year. People not so happy about that. And the, and the projections for the proposed pipeline are there would be, I think, 11 major spills over 25 years or something like that. That's like where they're going to be, and isn't that kind of a problem? You can't build a pipeline that doesn't spill. But anyway, so I voted against waiving all the rules. The House has voted, the majority has voted to waive all the rules. That won't come up in the Senate. I don't think all the rules will get waived, and that is something that EPA is grinding along through a process on. Yes, ma'am? What about the idea? Uh, I do have, uh, I'm working with Senator Tom Harkin on a proposal uh, targeted toward speculative trading. The, you know, the estimates are, and we don't know because the SEC is a Securities Exchange Commission supposed to regulate Wall Street, is operating with Commodore over 51 computers and can't quite keep up. But uh, the estimates are 60 to 70 percent of all daily stock trading is conducted by, uh, by supercomputers. Uh, and it's high volume trading where they'll trade one stock a thousand times in a minute. Uh, and so, you know, 30 to 40 percent is human driven or investment driven, the other part speculative. That could be part of, some economists say, why the stock market keeps going like this, uh, is that it's not oriented toward that kind of trading. So, Senator Harkin and I are working on a proposal to tax speculation. Uh, we're asking to have it scored. Uh, since we were told we would eliminate all speculation, and that's not going to pass Congress at two tenths of one percent, we're looking at a much smaller tax uh, than that, uh, and we don't have the estimates back yet. Uh, but the most common misconception there is a, there is another bill introduced by a guy, and I can understand how easily someone could mix me and him up. There's an African American member of Congress named Chaka Pata from Philadelphia who has a bill to tax all financial transactions meaning if you deposit money in the bank or whatever. It's a stupid bill. He's, he's never had a sponsor. Uh, it's never had a hearing. But he introduced this in the last Congress. It was called H.R. 4646. So the Wall Street people were very unhappy about my bill targeted for speculators. So someone planted an editorial in the St. Petersburg Times saying that his bill was my bill and Senator Harkin's bill, and we were going to tax all financial transactions. And this every once in a while, we had 20,000 hits on my website about this two weeks ago because it's up again on the internet. And someone has taken an analysis, which is done by, by called Snopes. And then there's also the other one the Oregonian does about, yeah, yeah, Polit 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 Politicek, who both said this is a total, absolute fabrication of lie and I have yeah, nothing to do with this bill. But they have edited that stuff to make it look like they came up to the conclusion it was my bill, and that's out there again. And one of my staff had a call last week from a woman said, I'm working from Snopes, and it says this is his bill. And Nick's like, send me what you got. And she sends it, and, and it comes across, and it was like a very heavily redacted, shall we say, or edited version that came to the wrong conclusion. So anyway, uh, I don't have that bill. Uh, he's reintroduced it, I guess, and we'll have a different number. 
Uh, I asked him not to reintroduce it because it was really stupid, but he wants to, so he did. And he can do whatever he wants. I can't prevent that. Yes? What's your position on amnesty and pro -equity? Well, uh, we tried uh, a broad amnesty once before I was in Congress in 1986. We said, okay, let's fix the, we had three million illegal immigrants at that point in time. And Congress said, well, we're going to fix it. And they said, we'll do two things. We'll have an amnesty. People have been here more than five years. They can prove they've been here, et cetera. They get amnesty. Uh, I don't remember what the exact conditions were. Again, that was before I was in Congress. And then, uh, and then they said the second part is we'll prevent the problem from happening again by requiring people to be here legally to work. Well, the second part never happened because the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, you know, Big Agriculture, and others came unglued and said you can't make us do that because you know we, you know. And plus, we didn't have any really good way of doing that at the time because there's you know, no national identity card, and I don't think there's a large group of people in this country who want to have to carry a national identity card. So we didn't. You know, we had Social Security numbers, but Social Security doesn't have very good computers either. And uh, so, until recently, there was no way to deal with that. Now there is, and I have a bill uh, that I've introduced, and I'm trying to work with the chair of the judiciary. I have a I have a solution for the future problem, which is. We, put, we use the, home, that, the Homeland Security uh, database, uh, which is now optional for employers to use. It's been pretty well tested at this point in time. It's still not perfect. But it associates you know, your age, sex, with your Social Security number and checks to see if that Social Security number is real and if it's in use anyplace else. Um, you know, we still not 100% bulletproof you know, in terms of you know, someone getting the Social Security number of someone who died and you know, whatever. But whatever. Uh, pretty good. And we use it for security at the airports and at the borders and all that. So uh, my bill would require that uh, we implement a mandatory program of using that and phase it in. First, we would review all government employees under that system and see. Is that different from e-verify? It, it's uh, it would be a an, an e-verify is only voluntary. This would be mandatory, and this builds on e-verify. Uh, if, and uh, E-Verify is only temporary at this point in time. This would be permanent law. So first, review all government employees, then require employers to use it on new hires, and ultimately review all employees. Now, that would resolve a lot of the issue of people coming in here, because you're not going to pay a coyote to sneak across the border if you can't get employment, and you're not going to hire someone illegally if you get the heck fined out of you, which under this bill you would. That's the other thing. E-Verify doesn't have a new set of very stringent penalties on employers who knowingly hire illegal immigrants. Uh, my bill does. Uh, then you got to figure out what you're going to do with the people who are already here, which is a much more difficult issue. But I would say it would, it would not be a general amnesty. It would be along the lines of and uh, something that was recently passed in the House, and it's very strict, in fact, which was this thing that goes to kids who were brought here by their parents. And uh, it's the conditions. Are, there are a lot of people who are American citizens who couldn't pass the conditions of this. Because the conditions are such, first you have to have been, uh, you know, you have to have been in the country more than five years. You have to have been brought get brought here by your parents. I can't remember it before a certain age. You have to have been here a minimum of five years. After graduated high school, you have to have a totally clean record. Uh, you have to pay fines. Uh, you have to you have to speak English, uh, and then. If you pass that test, then you have five years to either join the military and be honorably discharged or to go to college. And then if you do that, then uh, you also have another series of fines uh, and you still have to have a totally clean record. You can't get any federal benefits and at the end of 10 years, uh, you potentially become eligible for citizenship. So something maybe along those lines, maybe not quite that stringent to deal with the people who are already here, but some, or use a point system. Other countries have point systems and you know, award points for people who've been here a long time and paying taxes whose kids are citizens, for productive citizens, and, uh, and no points for gangbangers who just struck across the border to smuggle drugs in the US or whatever, and they go out of here. So anyway, there are ways to deal with it. No one's talking about it. Uh, and, but you know, I, we are potentially going to legislate on the area of employer sanctions and employment this year. But that's the only thing that might both the, you know, the, the uh, 3MAC and my ver version of, you know, uh, uh, some sort of way to deal with people who are illegally to become legal would have requirements about being English. So, uh, yes, sir, go ahead. Um, sorry. Uh, no, no, sorry, there's some behind it. Uh, no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, 
my idea goes to, uh, my question goes to the idea of entitlements in the country. Um, in no way do I think we should leave seniors out in the cold, but until you reach that point of being a senior, you don't get the cost of living increase that comes with Social Security to your minimum wage, and the poverty level, but it's a- no, I, didn't, I didn't follow what you just said. So, for example, if you're a senior citizen, getting Social Security benefits each year with inflation, your rate for Social Security is increased. No, um, anyway, we can get there, but go ahead. It has <coughs> increased recently, but go ahead. Yeah. Um, however, for years at a time, minimum wage is left unchanged. Not in Oregon, it's in there. I, I understand, but okay. the country is more than just the same. Sure. Um, and people's wages are falling farther and farther behind. The dichotomy of wealth is wider and wider every year. But more importantly, like I said, it's uh, the idea of the way we think of entitlements in this country. The poverty level, what is defined as the national poverty level, is to me shameful for what is called the most wealthy country in the world. $10,000 a year for anyone trying to live is ridiculous. So, what my question is what do you think of everyone that's under 65 not able to draw Social Security benefits? in this 